Light Waves Radio is for all seekers of truth and anyone who seeks to understand the many mysteries of our place in the cosmos and life itself. We explore a variety of topics that we feel are most urgent and valuable at this time and strive to find real truth and solid answers through contemplating, sharing, and exploring experiences and understanding of the bigger picture. We live in an incredibly exciting new and even awkward time in the history of our planet. History has been written and rewritten in so many ways and truth hidden for so many reasons. It is a very real challenge to discern what is real and what is programmed in our society and our lives. Together and through our mutual explorations and discussions, we all have the ability to elevate our understanding and raise the frequency of our planet to a level that literally assists the evolution of humankind. There is so much we can do to make a difference for ourselves, our lives, and our future within the greater universal reality. Please join us in this journey of discovery. Evolve your truth. We are all here for a purpose. Let us discover what is within us and what we are yet to discover from without us. Welcome to Lightwaves Radio Show Inner Circle, and tonight we have a special guest here with us. Paul Wesley will be joining us, a.k.a. Prince Truth Chaser, and let me go ahead and bring him co-host Guy Weddle. Welcome to Inner Circle. How are you doing today, Wendy? Amazing. How are you? Not bad, actually. Hot as hell. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I think it's probably hotter here in Arizona. Yeah, it might be, but I'm just, I'm just a wuss, so... <laughs> Okay, and <laughs> let me go ahead and bring in our guest, Paul Wesley, a.k.a. Prince Truth Chaser. Welcome to Inner Circle. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Um, I just start off to say thanks for, uh, you know, inviting me to the show. Great. We're really happy and, to be um, here. And hi to everybody out there who's, uh, you know, listening to the show. Great. And, Paul, would you first go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, uh, yeah. First, um, um, well, the one thing I want to talk about that I think is really important is the whole, you know, the whole abduction situation that has been going on worldwide. And, you know, to get in a little bit about myself, with that, it would kind of be where I myself, you know, was an abductee. Um, I was born and raised in Philadelphia. Um, you know, I was abducted, you know, um, from a, from a young age, and so that's basically a lot where I can, you know, have, have based a lot of my experience from that, plus I've interviewed a lot of people, and, you know, I'm just a, a guy who cares about humanity, has um, been abducted, um, I've done videos, interviews on, you know, with um, different movements, um, I've interviewed Peggy Kane, uh, Sophia Smallstorm, she's really good with Ken, for the Ken trail issue, so I mean, um, you know, just a Guy, a regular guy that's uh, passionate about passionate about humanity, and you know wants to share my story with the world. <laughs> Great, definitely. We're glad that you're here to do that. So, Paul, you said that you yourself was an abductee. Um, when did this happen? Oh God! Wow, you're you have to go way back. I just, the earliest I can remember would probably be like six years old. Okay. What? What? How did yeah, you? I, I was really young. Yeah. I'm sorry, Wendy, what did you say? And how did that happen? What, what happened when you were six? Um, from what I can remember, it, 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 it was kind of like, a, I guess you call it, with that astral travel where you kind of out of the body experience, and I would kind of float, I guess you'd say float out of body, what seemed to me, I was, well, you know, the kid, was, and I would be floating out of the window, and I would be grabbing on like the street lights, trying to hold on. And um, you know, I was um, I, I I I don't I don't remember too much as far as like being on a craft craft, but I do remember 
seen is the, you know, the little big headache grays with the big black eyes. Now, I want to make a point with that. The, the eyes that they have aren't real. They're actually lenses to help them see in the dark. And our sun, our sunlight that, you know, um, helps us all, you know, it's, they, it's to help them from that sunlight. A lot of people don't know that, but, you know, I just want to throw it out there. Yeah, I'm glad that you told us. Thank you. And were there other experiences that you had like this? Uh, actually, yeah, there were. It was, um, yeah, it was, it was the grades at first, and that pretty much happened, you know, that pretty much happened, I would say, for, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm 32, so I would say about, so I was about 20. And then I was contacted by um, a sea lion race. Bates. That's standing about nine feet tall, I guess you'd say, but I would guess about nine feet tall if I had to guess. And they're from Lyra, the, you know, from Lyra. And, you know, basically it was a sucking, it was an empowering experience for me because when I, when I seen these beings, you know, it was like, okay, listen, you know, you're here, you're on a mission. You know, you, if you empower yourself, you know, you can get rid of all these negative beings because that's what they are. They're negative beings that feed off negative energy. And I, and, and I'm, um, you know, um, ever since I was approached by this uh, higher dimensional, you know, feline race, everything's been smooth sailing, and I've been, you know, on the mission that I'm on where I just want to help, uh, you know, bring this world to a, you know, a, a, lo- a higher love vibrational, you know, consciousness because that's what needs to happen. I agree. Well, you know, dude, I uh, I never really had uh, uh, I've had experiences to where I um, had a lot of missing time at a young age. Yeah. Where I would be in the house uh, when I was a little kid, and I would just disappear, and then they'd find me three, four hours later. I'd be walking down the road with you know just my shirt on, no diaper or nothing. And I'm all oh laughing. my god! Yeah, and I'm wow. all la- and I'm all laughing and giggling. You know, I'm all yeah. eh, you know, I'm not like upset and stuff. So you, you weren't ter- you weren't terrified and shaking in a corner somewhere, right? Yeah, and uh, <laughs> then it's like junior high or whatever, uh, I had three whole days to where uh, wow. I woke I woke up and I was wrapped up in a blanket like a uh, like a burrito. Essentially, it was just my right. head sticking out of the top, and uh, you know my parents busted in the room. Where the hell have you been? Where'd you go? And I'm just terrified. I'm just laying there, you know, and I'm just like staring at them. So I have no idea where I've been. I have no memory of it. All right. You know? So uh, wow. Yeah, I see. I, I see. Have you so, this, 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 just no memory at all? You never actually seen any beings or nothing like that? No, no. Uh, not that I can remember. I haven't had any. Uh, regression or anything like that done about it, um, mm. but uh, you know, I, I'm I'm just letting it happen. If I if I remember it, I remember it. I've had so many other right. you know types of things happen to where just really high strangeness, you know. And as with Wendy, and that's why we got you on today, so we can uh, right. you know all come together and just talk this stuff out because a lot of listeners have stuff too, you know, and uh, right. it just uh, reinforces what they're or validates what they're going through. So, uh, exactly. You know what, uh, I just... I'm go sorry, ahead. go ahead, buddy. You know, go ahead, man. Yeah, well, well, the thing is, is a lot of people that have been abducted, you know, it, they're, they're, you know, it depends on how much an individual knows as far as, like, the galaxy goes and certain rules that play within, you know, the galactic rules. Um, and one is free will. And, and free will is being taken from people. Now, the greys, if, 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 if you want, I can get into a little history of them, but I'm not going to kill too much time. It's just, just a little bit. They're called the Zetas, okay? And this is a slave race. Now, they are, as themselves, are a dying race. Now, you know, they're, you know, they have um, time travel capability, so it may seem like, okay, well, back in, like, ancient Sumerian times, you know, they they had been here, and, and you know, they've been watching over us. Well, it's all BS. It's all bullshit. 
The truth is they have time, time travel capabilities, and they've only been here for about 73 years. When they got here, the Germans turned them down. The United States government said, look, you know, give us, we'll give you a couple of heads of cattle. You can experiment on them. You can save your race. But in return, you know, we want tech. We want um, anti-gravitational technology. We want um, dark matter, you know, technology. And, you know, that's what, what had happened. And, you know, um, they're, they're called the Zeppers. I'm pretty sure that's the name of them. And it's, 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 it's like I said, they're a slave race. And, you know, it's, it's rough. Because a lot of people have been abducted and they think, you know, they think like, okay, well, you know, what's the matter? Because I have a fetus and then two weeks later the fetus is missing. All right? People are being like, you know, forced against their free will to be like experimented. Well, and this has been going on since what, like the 50s? I, I mean, I, I myself, I kind of figure, all right, well, this is an advanced race of beings. It should be done and over with by now, right? They should have already got what they wanted and, you know, whatever. But the, the, the thing I want to address in the show is the hybrids. Where are all these children, these star children? Where are they? Okay? They have to be somewhere. Now, I do I do issues on chemtrails. I do, do issues on Monsanto. And it's both facts and facts. Okay, I do issues on, on fluoride and nasty stuff that's in our water. It's kind of like we're being slow killed off as society, as a race. But why? And, and, and you know, if, 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 if you really sit and think about it, what makes sense to me is that you have what's called the Great Awakening. You know, people are waking up, people are saying, hey, we live on a prison planet, governments are fake, you know, um, money's BS, all systems are rigged, we're all a bunch of, you know, flakes. And what would you do if you were the elite or few who controlled the many? You would be scared shitless. You're like, okay, well, what are we going to do? Now, the easiest thing to do is kill off the population and have these hybrids take over. You understand what I'm saying? It's kind of like, okay, well, we don't have to worry about mass uprising or revolution, we slow kill them, boom, bang, bang. I mean, just, that's, that's one thing that could be happening. And there's, there's a, a bunch of other possibilities, but I'm not going to take up too much time because I know you guys want to talk, so. <laughs> no, man, this is your show. Absolutely, we want to hear, we want to hear from you, Paul, like, definitely. Like uh, people can hear my big mouth. Yeah. All right, well, I, I, just, <laughs> I, just want to throw out, I just want to throw out a couple names real, real quick. One is Phil Schneider. He was in, you know, the UFO business. He was a naval officer, but he talked about underground bases. He was found, I think they said he hung himself over the suicide. Another yeah, one is uh, Carla he, Turner. He actually had a stroke. He was a very... Right, well, another one's Carla Turner, and she's um, she's a, um, a, U- a UFOologist, and she's uh, actually, you know, has a PhD and all that. She had got cancer, and she mysteriously died. I think there's a total of 137 recorded people... When they start speaking truth, they're just mysteriously, whoop, gone. But you said that Phil Schneider had a stroke? Yeah, he had a, uh, he had a massive stroke. Um, he's a pretty big guy. And if you ever listened to mm. him talk or watched him talk, he got very upset, mm. you know, veins bulging out of his head. And, you know, uh, maybe they scared <laughs> him. Oh, yeah, he, was, he would be it, pretty. It, it, it's always a heart attack or stroke or cancer, though. That's the thing. It, it, it's either a heart attack. Well, a stroke is kind of like, you know, like, well, you know, condition, kind of in the same family as a heart attack. But it seems to be, it seems to be the recipe for death for anyone who decides to think outside the box and go against, you know, the agenda. Sure, that's and, been um, uh, what I w- that's been happening with scientists all over the world. They exactly. Just, yeah. They just, you know, die. <laughs> Car wrecks are good. <laughs> they just, yeah, they just. Uh, <laughs> They just happen to, um, you know, pass away somehow. But, you know, it's – where are all these hybrids? That's the question. But I'm sorry, Wendy. Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say there's definitely a pattern with everyone. So go mm-hmm. on. Well, they could definitely be in hiding um, or not turned on yet. You know what I mean? I mean, there's – Yeah. That, I, you know, there's definitely probably a, a switch of some kind. Or maybe they're – they're uh, they're waiting a couple generations, maybe. Hmm. I don't think there's a switch, and I'm going to tell you why. I don't think I, I, I believe in synthetic beings, and I think that the rays are one of those. 
But I do believe what I think is that they're already amongst us. I, I did a video called, um, you can't really hear it, but it's called, but it's occupied, but you know, it's called Occupied in the Love Tent. And we were talking about UFOs, and one thing the girl said to me is something that I, I've, you know, I've actually questioned myself as being a little, woohoo, you know, off the wall about this, but, you know, I, I had came to the conclusion, like, if you go to the hipster coffee shops in the inner cities and you go to the hipster bars, everything's different. Their drinks are different. Their food is different. You know, um, the clubs are different. They dress different. And I'm not talking about, like, hippie hippies, like, peace, peace, we are peace hippies, because they're not, they're not the type, they're not the type of, 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 of hippie. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't want change or a green earth. It's, it's, just, it's just totally off the grid. Now, when I interviewed this girl, she says to me, she goes, I said, well, how do you know if, if you can spot a hybrid or not? And she goes, well, I was in the coffee shop, and my mind just went, wow. I was just like, no, I did not. Because I've been saying this for a while now. And I, ever since I've been contacted by this feline race, this Lyrian race, I've had the gift to tell if someone's a hybrid or not. I can tell if you're shape-shifting or a shape shifter, if you're a hybrid, I just know. And it's not only the eyes. It's, you know, the eyes are kind of like, everyone says, okay, what's the eyes? But it's the side cheekbone. You can tell by the nose. I can. I can just tell by the aura. Um, the tongue, the fucking to be five minutes. I can tell. And I'm on record, and I'm on record saying this, and, and I don't care if people call me a kook. That's, that's fine. I mean, <laughs> you know, I can, I can tell. This is my, uh, mon- my uh, mantra that I tell everybody is that, you know, it's from Hellboy, and it's just, you know, us freaks got to, you know, we got to stick together, you know. And, right. Uh, you, you can't uh, let people uh, try to take your voice away, no matter how weird it sounds, because uh, you just got to keep walking your walk, man. Keep your head up. If they don't want to listen, then it's their fault. I'm also going to name, I'm also going to, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you can't, uh, can't save everybody. Right, Tracy? I don't think you can, but I'm sure it's all going to try, man. I just, like, my passion for humanity is, 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 is what keeps me going. You know, you know what keeps me going is when I go to a park, and I'm with my kid, and I see a little kid playing, and, and they wave at you, and I look up and I see all the shit being sprayed in the sky with trail. That's what keeps me going. That high five, that look. Or when someone, you know, contacts me, they're like, you know, dude, you, you're doing this real, you know. You're putting your ass on the line. And, and, and it's ego-free. You no, know, I don't, you know, I, I never ask for donations for anything. You know what I mean? You have people that say, oh, well, can you donate for, you know, my web page, or can you donate for this? Like, if, 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 I, if, if I have a passion for it, I don't ask for a dime. And I just want to put that out on your show. You know, if this is what I do, I pay for it. If there's an event you want me to go to, I pay for it. I go to it. And I've, I've always been a strong believer. Unless I'm selling something and someone wants to buy it, that's different, you know? Exactly. And you have to go with what resonates true to you, definitely. Yeah. But the whole abduction thing, I mean, this is real. Millions and millions and millions of people worldwide have been abducted. Um, you know, I can get into different bases, um, how the NSA is directly involved with the black government, secret government, um, and it all comes from, from the, you know, the National Security Agency. They're the ones that are involved with the whole hybrid um, agenda, the gray agenda. And, you know, the one thing is that I want people to know is that with all the nasty things that are going on in the world, with chemtrails, with, with um, you know, everything, you know, it, it, there, there's a way out, and that way out is through love and through light, and and understanding the fact that that we live in a third dimensional planet, and you know, we can't expect a galactic federation to come down and save us. We can't expect an Andromedan, Andromedan council to come down and save us. We have to raise each other's, you know, vibration vibration to where well, it's a love, because see, when when we do that, we raise the planet vibration, the trees, you know. Everything, damn everything. And this is the only way out of this mess. And see, the, the towers of the elite, they know this. This is why there's war started. This is why, you know, shit's going on over in the Middle East and everything else. They want to keep everyone in a panic of fear. Because when you do that, you lower, you know, you keep the vibration on the planet low. And what happens is you have chaos. You know, it's, that's what they want. And 
and, you know, I know that's kind of off the UFO topic, but... <laughs> No, that's okay. So we want to hear about everything. And so you've gone to a lot of different events and stuff. So what is your, your take on it? Your take is just that they're trying to, you know, cause fear. Is there, what else have you gotten from the events and information and stuff that you received? Um, well, for, for the events I went through, I mean, a lot of people, it, it, it seems to me like, especially the Occupy movement in general, I, I agree with some of it, some of it I don't. Um, I'm there to film, I'm there to video and show people that can't get off their couch or that are on their couch and want to get off their couch. You know, I want to show them what's going on. And, you know, but I, there's, I, I think that, that the Occupy movement and a couple other movements, well, you know, they look at the, the small picture. It's like, okay, banks are ripping us off, okay? Okay, you know, well, Fargo or Comcast are ripping us off, but that's just a small piece of the pie of what's really going on. And you would have to look at, like, and the Fed and, you know, the Rothschild, the Bilderberg. You would have to really get deep down into it. You know, and, and, um, you know, I just, um, I think that, that, I think that, you know, that, that what, what, what the, what the elite wants is they want mass fear. They want mass panic. And, you know, I think it's all connected to the alien agenda. Of course I do. Because, um, they see these negative beings, the greys, the dracos, dracos meaning draconians. They are the, the, the bad answers of the universe. You know, they range anywhere between, I would say, seven feet to about 12 feet, probably eight. The women of the species are the same thing, warriors. Um, I think their language from what I was told is called Ishu, it's E-S-S-H-U. And the women have battle contests with the elders. And it's, it's, I, it's, I, I don't want to get into this real quick, and I know I'm taking up a lot of time, but I, when I first found out about reptilian this and gray that, I was first angry because I heard of the Orion words, and it's, it's words in, um, Lyra, and, the, you know, what had happened was, there was a human reptilian war. All throughout, you know, the universe, the galaxies, everything, and 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 that's what happened was you know Lyrians went to the Pleiades and so forth and so on. But when I first figured out about you know alien, you know when I got deep down with the reptilian agenda, I, I was angry, and then the anger turned to love, and then love turned back to anger, and I kept struggling. It was like a tug of war with me, you know. And then ultimately it comes down to love, and um, I think that is the only way out. Um, but I, I wanted to understand the enemy. I wanted to get, I want to know where you shit, where you live, everything. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And I kind of figured by doing that, this and understanding the enemy, then you can find a way out. Because until you understand them, and, and then, and then when, I, when I did that, I've met people who I've seen shape shift, who I've seen feed people on the street. Now, doesn't that kind of... You know, <laughs> doesn't that kind of... Now, uh, and, and that brings me to, are all reptilians evil? And I, I don't think so. A lot of people say, you know, the Draco, the Draco, the Draco, you know, they destroy planets, they do this, they enslave people, they enslave the great. This all may be true. But there's the Arcturians who are positive, and you know, other different beings, and you have positive beings and you have negative beings. You know, the positive beings um, are attracted to love, they're attracted to, you know, kindness, stuff like that. But you guys have anything to say? Well, what what do you think attracts them to uh, our planet? Well, 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 you know, I think what attracts them to the planet is the fact that the, um, the Zetas, the Greys, are a dying species. And our DNA, we, I think we, when we were seated here, we had a 12 helix DNA strand, and now we have like a two. So somewhere along the line, we were manipulated. And like I said, the greys have, you know, um, time travel capabilities. We were manipulated to where, you know, this is why we can't, when you say about humanity being a spleef and this and that, it's because we, like I said, we, we were originated with a 12 helix DNA strand, but... What, what attracts them to the planet is, is simple. It's, 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 you know, it's got our DNA. You know, we're the perfect slaveries, if you think about it. I mean, um, we, we reproduce fast. We, we, you know, we're, we're, we're just 
a perfect slave race for, for, for the Dracos or for the, for the Zen. And, you know, they're a dying species and they, they want to, want to, um, you know, reproduce. So they, they use us to do it. Another thing is that I've heard was gold. I heard gold was a big thing and they, and they kind of mix it into a powder. This is why back in early times you had like, you know, the big obsession for gold and gold mining and this and this and this and this is because I think it was the Draco's planet was one of the, one of the, one of the planets where the, where the reptilians lived on, it was something with their sun where their ozone layer was messed up and they needed the gold to actually fix it. So, you know, there's all kinds of different reasons for why. Uh, yeah, I've heard that too. You know, uh, gold is pretty uh, abundant in the universe. It's one of the, uh, uh, you know, heavy elements created during a supernova. So, you know, it's everywhere. But, uh, right. um, so, when you first saw someone shapeshift, where, right. were you, where were you and what were you doing? Were you just like at a coffee shop or walking down the road? Or were they driving <laughs> well, like their car? Like all of a <laughs> you know. Well, Honestly, you know, man, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you, the honest truth is, I was making love. Okay. The girl that I was making love to, her left, which would be her left thigh, shifted, and her left arm shifted. And it it wasn't like you would say, all right, it's green, green, green. It wasn't a green. It was like a rough, brownish color. And I later fixed. Now, see, at this time, to the extent of what I know now, okay, and about Ratonians and this and this and this. So, so from what I hear, the brown, the brown look of them is kind of like the older race that have been. I guess they've been here for a long, long, long time. I guess because it's the white ones are the Dracos, the brown skin ones are, or would be like second, and then you would have the green skin, you know, or something. But the first time I was, um, I was with this girl. I'm not going to name her name. She knows who she is, and she's going to probably scream at me because. I'm saying this on your show. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, she shaped her skin. And, and I, you know what? I wasn't scared, though, guy. At the time, I was, I had this, I think she shit her, she was more surprised that, that I seen it. Because I got this overwhelming feeling of, like, I was just being used at the time. It's, it's, it's like a telepathy, energy, like, anger. Because it was like, like, shit, she, I don't know did he say it, but I wasn't scared. I was just like, oh, shit, like, what am I saying here? And, um, yeah, it was, <laughs> that, that was the first time. Did it ruin the mood? <laughs> uh, you know what? Not so much. Uh, I'm not going to say not, because then you guys think I'm a freak. But, <laughs> nah, you know, it, 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 was, it was weird. It was weird. <laughs> it was weird. But I would say the, total, the energy ruined the mood, because it was like a, like a shit. You see me. And... I was just like, all right, whatever. Maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me. It felt different, you know. But I was like, whatever. I, at this time, I didn't in. know what was going on. <laughs> Mushrooms are kicking it's in. Not, when you're in the mood, you're in the mood. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That guy? I just said, yeah, the, the acid started kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, 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 I, I questioned her about this, and she admitted it. She's like, yeah, you know, um, this is what happened, and... You know, do you hate me? And I said, no, I don't hate you. I said, um, no. And then she said, well, how how would you feel if I told you I was something that you're fighting against? And I said, well, that would depend on if you hated humanity, because if you hate humanity, then we'll have a problem. And if you don't hate humanity, if you're love, then shit, I love you. I mean, this is what it's all about. It's all about love and light, and, and that's key. You know, we create our own reality through thought. You know, um... And I think the two biggest, you know, shackles on humanity as a whole is religion and the media. And I believe that, that religion is, because it's like you have to get down on your knees and you have to pray for and pray, and it's going to piss a lot of people off. But, you know, when are we going to empower ourselves as human beings and, 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 and change the world ourselves? Do you understand? And, 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 and mainstream media is the same way. That's the other, I would say, the other biggest shackle on humanity because they, they control it through television, they control it through lies. It's just a big circle of 
bullshit control. Yeah, I agree 100%. It's keeping us from evolving as a species. Yeah. All right. But so, um, I, I kind of feel like... Uh, go ahead. No, I was going to say... I was going to say... Uh, did she uh, point out any other people or uh, get into... Uh, well, is she in the know about what's going on or is she just here? You're talking about the girl that shapeshifted? Yeah. Right. Well, she, she knows exactly what's going on. And here's the thing. It's like I said, at this time, I knew nothing to the extent that I know now. Nothing about manifesting your own thoughts, controlling your mind, and everything else. And she looked at me, and she's just like, look, we were in a hotel. And I'm not going to get into details because she's going to hear this, and she's just like close by. <laughs> not like close by as like in my house, but you know what I'm saying. So anyway, so... But she, 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 she looked at me and she's like, dude, I know everything about you. Um, she knew when I was in my mom's house at the time, she was in another state. She knew exactly what, what my wall in my mom's house, what my bed looked like. Uh, um, and at the, you gotta remember, at the time, I didn't take this. I took it with a grain of salt, because just like any person was asleep in La La Land would. <laughs> you know, it's like, you would be like, oh, okay, well, I'm a little freaked out that she might be psychic. Maybe that's all it is, but, you know, and, you know, I, I, I kind of tip my hat to her because knowing what I know now, she, you know, she kind of, when she seen my video, the whole UFO invasion, you know, um, holographic hoax or, 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 or fact, she got a little angry at that. She's like, look, you know, we're not, we're not all evil and, you know, you don't want to learn anymore. You don't want to learn. I'm like, well, I need to learn. I already know everything about you. It is what it is, girl. If, if you want to, if you want to be cool with me, let's be cool. You know, I'll, I'm not going to come at you negative, but hey, I'm 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 here to save the world. And as crazy as that sounds, you know, um, I don't plan on making a dime from it. I don't want to make a dime from it. I don't want to be the next Alex Jones. I don't want to be the next David Icke. I don't want to be the next Wilcox. I just want to be Paul Wesley from True Chaser and hug people, see them smile, and, and raise love vibration. That's it. And if I can, you know, raise the, the love vibration on my shape shifting friend, then <laughs> shit, I'll do it. Because she does seem kind of angry but, at times, but it's just, I don't know. Okay, and Paul. I love everybody. <laughs> good, I'm glad. <laughs> Paul, earlier you mentioned that you can you can always tell if someone is a, a hybrid. Oh, you kind of, oh, is, like, is it like a feeling? How, how, does, how do you have the knowing that they're hybrids? I would say a mental feeling more than like a physical feeling. Or energy feeling. I mean, it's, 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 I've conditioned my mind to the point to where, you know, it's kind of like right out of a Star Wars book where you can influence other people through thought, through, through eye contact, through, through energy. Not that I do that, I don't, but you know what I'm saying? You, you, you can, I, you, I can see it like through my mind. Like when I, if I look at them in the eyes, they would know I knew instantly. It's, it's hard to explain unless you're, like, people who meditate and, you know, who have the gift. We we'll understand what I'm saying. You can just, you, you know. It's kind of like if you see a cat on the street, you know it's a cat, right? The cat looks at you, the cat knows that you know it. The cat knows you're a human being. You just know. For the untrained mind, you wouldn't know anything. You're like, oh, it's just some dude that's walking down the street, you know? Right. It's, it's out there. And what I'm saying is out there, but it's, 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 it's true. We all have the gift. It's, it's just, we're, we've been beaten down as a society, as people, for so long. And, you know, they push some shit from, from, you know, credit to the grave. They push candy on our kids. They push vaccines on our kids. They push fucking, you know, pharmaceuticals on our kids. They want us in this state of low vibration and asleep. They want us to stay down there. They don't want millions of people like me and you who know what's going on because then, you know what, we would take over the planet and it would be a planet of love. And these negative beings that they don't want that. And and while well, this key and one thing is that I've heard about the underground bases are being destroyed. I've heard that there's sonic oh, what is it, sonic beams that are being shot into these bases that we can't see that are actually, you know, knocking them off. And I also heard that there's an astral war going on. And what I mean by astral war, I mean when you die. When you die you go to, you know, the, the other world, you know, to afterlife. Right. Um, I heard there's a war. It has to be done there first because that's where 
humanity is, believe it or not, it's worse there than it is here on some cases. But it has, that has to be cleaned up first. And then, you know, this, this reality is going to be taken care of. But the one thing I want to stress is this alien invasion. This, you know, everyone's got their eyes on the sky. Everyone's, oh, my God, UFO, UFO. Now, see, the UFOs are flown and operated by the United States, well, by the humans and the Dracos. Dracos being reptilian, the seven foot, twelve foot tall, you know, seven, nine foot tall, whatever. There's many different sizes. That's who's flying them. Okay? Now, the problem is this, is that you have this massive uprising. Like I said, they can kill us off and the hybrids can basically take over. Or what they can do is, the one way to stop everything, a massive uprising of any kind, is a UFO invasion. And like it, with the Tupac, a holographic thing, you know, they had them on stage dancing around. It looked real. If they were to do that, and I want to be clear with everyone who's going to hear this, because this is straight from the heart. I'm a man of love and light, and I want you to understand what I'm about to say. It hasn't been said anywhere else. The plan is going to be this. If it's a hoax, they're going to say, okay, there's evil aliens here. We took care of them. We've been living in underground bases under the earth. We were originated from the dinosaurs, but when the, the Bing Bang or whatever hit, the dinosaurs were all extinct. That's all BS. But when, but when that happened, we were underground, and we've been babysitting you guys, helping you evolve as a race. And they're going to come up as the saviors, and that is it's bullshit. It's, it's all wrong, and I just want to let your viewers know that you know, don't believe it. And I'm, 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 I'm not saying this to, you know, a lot of people are going to be mad or going to, because a lot of people, you know, they're, they're, they, don't, they don't want to empower themselves. They don't want to pull their, you know, goddamn pants up and say, I'm going to make the change for the world. They want politics to do it. They want aliens to do it. Because generally people, if, 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 if a mothership came down, would get on their, knee, on their knees and go, save me, take me to Mars. Like, really? Get up. Get, I mean, how long is humanity going to be on its knees? I'm just letting everyone know right now that this, if, 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 if a reptilian comes out of that ship or a gray comes out of that ship, you better, you better get ready because the ship's going to hit the Okay. And that's, um, that's my message. If, if, if it happens, it's real or hoax or holographic hoax. But uh, you guys have anything to say on there? Well, like a Project Blue Beam? Is that, is that what you mean? Are you familiar yeah, with that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, a little bit, but I, I, I brought a little on it, but, you know, I, 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 I think that regardless how they do it, I mean, for all we know, it could be a real UFO that has, you know, real Dracos in it, and they just decide to come down. And, you know, I, I just, but I think regardless, regardless what happens, if it's not like an invasion type of deal, it could be just where we see them land on the White House lawn and they say, hi, we've been here watching over you type of deal. Well, they won't do that. Have to be they won't do that because we'll hmm. shoot at them. We'll shoot missiles at them. We'll, oh, yeah, right. That, that's, right. you know, think about humans for a minute and, you know, how we, how, how we react to the little things. You know, uh, <clears throat> we beat people up and hurt each other over stupid stuff. Or just imagine if a... If an alien uh, landed and all the mm -hmm. belief systems immediately were challenged and all that stuff, especially in, like, the Middle East and stuff like that, I mean, uh, uh, the earth would, uh, the cities would be on fire, man. They'd be burning. People would be rioting. And just, uh, in certain parts, you know, I'm not saying everybody, but um, there's all the, you know, the fundamentalists out there would be, you know, they'd be going batshit crazy, essentially. Really, know? right. And, uh... I agree. You know, and people are, people kill what they fear. Or they, they try to destroy right. what they fear. And, uh... You know, but that's, that's the conditioning, guy. And go ahead. You're right. You're sure, it is. Right. It's exactly what it is. And, uh... And it's a shame. Because I personally don't well, this believe... This is our job, though. Yeah, I understand. And I personally our don't believe... Our job is... We, we, we have to, to bring them up to a love vibration. I'm sorry. That's I right. I, 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 I agree with you. Um, yeah. But, so you, you know, believe, that's just... You believe what? That's just part of, you know, our conditioning or whatever. 
You know, they're gonna they're right. gonna they're gonna do that naturally. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we kill each other over black and white as it is. We think we're gonna do it some <laughs> lizard man side, but you know, come off of it's like people are gonna go crazy, and maybe that's why they have the FEMA kids. Maybe they're I don't know. There's a lot of shit going down really soon, and. Mass panic, it seems like everyone's preparing for mass panic. It could be, you know, Planet X Nibiru. It could be, you know, a fake alien invasion. It could be where, could, one way or another, you you guys do realize, the reptilians, are going to say, hey, look, we're here. Or the Andromedon Council is going to say, look, we clean up the astral world. We've been here to help. We've destroyed the underground bases. You know, yeah, there should be in spreading this guy out and your waters are polluted, but we're here to help. And one way or another, things will unfold for good or for bad. Sure. Yes, they will. Yeah. You know, you know uh, I don't believe we're on top of the food chain. Um, Not at all. Uh, on Do you really want me to get into that guy? No. <laughs> I, I, you know, and, and humans, humans are okay with alien life as long as it's microbes or... They're not eating us. Yeah, or they're, you know, some little fishy swimming around in some primordial primordial uh, ooze on, on some other planet. But, you know, the minute they show up and all of a sudden they got a bigger stick, things are going to change. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden we'll that. most of the world will call them demons. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Not, they're yeah. going to call them demons, yeah. yeah. Uh, which so. is not true. It's it's not. I mean, um, again, I don't think they're all evil. Um the couple that I've seen weren't evil. Um, and now the thing is, is that if you're a reptilian and you can shape shift and you see that I see you, you're going to do one or two things. You're going to get real defensive because you know how humans are, which just happens. Uh, um, or you're going to be like, oh, shit, like, you can see me. Cool, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not saying a few humans haven't been thrown in the stew pot in history. This is all through the hieroglyphics. Matter of fact, I'm going to post something on Facebook. These both are open Facebook. It shows the ancient, um, I think it's the, I think it's the Aztecs. They all have peppers, and you can see, like, the, the, the big Draco, and there's, like, a pot with different body parts, with human, human body parts. You know, if you look at the ancients, they would sacrifice to, to the gods. Mostly virgins and all that BS, but they would sacrifice up to the gods, to the sky gods. If, if you look at any biblical text, any, right. um, you know, there's, the, the, the lizard race is always there. The thing is, is that it's been taught to be forgotten about. And, you know, we've got, we really, I, I, I don't like when people say that we did this to ourselves. Like, oh, you know, everything will screw up because humanity did it to itself. That's not true. Because there's a lot of people who are asleep. There's a lot of people who don't know what's going on, and it's not their fault. You know what I'm saying, Ty? Wendy? Yes, exactly. Yeah, they're, they're distracted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, and I really feel like not everyone is meant to actually be awakened. And it's hard for a lot of people to accept that because so many of us want to get the truth and the information out there. And, like, why won't you wake up seems to be the one thing that, all, you know, many truth seekers are so frustrated by. And it's hard to, you know, accept that, you know what, they're not, you know, they're not everyone is supposed to. You have to just get the information out there and provide it. And then if that person isn't willing to awaken, you can't take it personally. you got to move forward to the next person and try to see if that person person is one that is meant to be awakened. We're not all supposed to be a part of this change, is what I truly believe. That's true. Can I ask you guys some questions if you don't mind? I know this is my show, but... <laughs> no, do whatever you want, dude. Awesome, man, awesome. I, I want to I start off with you, Guy. Um, what do you think is going to happen? Do you, what, as far as a hybrid scenario and this, you know, UFO... Disclosure, alien, reptilian alien disclosure. What do you, what do you think is going to happen? In years I, I don't think there's going to be a disclosure, not by us. Um, there's too much power uh, and control to be given up. Uh, when I, you know, when I talk about the government having this information, I don't talk about the civilian government, like the elected government, like Obama and Congress and all that, because. Right. I mean, there may be a few congressmen and, sel- or, and senators that are out there for, you know, that are, <laughs> you know, 
in office their whole life, they may have some information. But, you know, you got to understand that they, they took this uh, information, uh, whatever it may be, going from Roswell to – because we actually have no idea what they've got. Um, right. And it is compartmentalized to the point that one person doesn't know what the other person is doing. You know what I mean? And those those yeah. people that have that information are in uh, – they have a tremendous amount of power over everybody. They are literally above every single law on this planet. And mm-hmm. – uh, they can and will do anything to keep this information from getting out because yep. sure. it's human nature. You know, once you have power, you know, you don't want to give it up. Just to give it up. Why, right. What would be the incentive to do that? Um, right. And as far as uh, a lot of these other things, I mean, I don't see how uh, secrets are uh, can be kept when they're when the, when it's that big of a scenario. You know, it's like Osama bin Laden. They're like, oh, he was killed ten years ago, blah blah blah. But think about it. If he was really get, if he was really killed ten years ago, what it would actually take for uh, the whole world to keep that secret? Right. All the people in the Middle East. All of the smaller level people, um, you know, you're talking uh, keeping something secret for ten years. When all of these people that uh, uh, how how would how would the United States and uh, Al Qaeda work together to keep that a secret? You know what I mean? It just didn't happen. There, there, yeah. There's there's no communication. The only reason we knew where he was in that mountain range to begin with is that Iran got so pissed off that they went to the United Nations and met with uh, you know, our intelligence services because you know, we had no communication with Iran and they definitely don't want Al-Qaeda anywhere around them. You know, they're a big uh, uh, they're totally against, they're Shiites, they're totally against uh, Al-Qaeda. You know, so as far as keeping secrets and disclosures and stuff like that, you know, disclosure is not going to happen by us. You know what? You know what I equate disclosure to? Uh, the rapture uh, for Christians. Disclosure is yeah. the rapture or the second coming for, you know, UFO people or whatever. Right. You know, they're petitioning the White House when. You know, they have no information. They're not lying. They don't have any information. You know? No, it's all done by the black government, right? Yeah, yeah unless you're uh, George Bush Sr. or right. Henry, Henry Kissinger or uh, some of yeah. these people. They have that. They're in the know with that information. All these Cold War guys, you know, probably right. Dick Cheney uh, had information on that. So. Thank you. Yeah, they're, they're all, they're all, yeah, that, they're all, I'm not even going to get into why they have it or, <laughs> but um, if, you, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, Wendy, um, what, do, what do you see in the near future, uh, in the next uh, couple of years to come? Well, as far as like a um, a big disclosure thing, I agree. Um, I don't see that, that happening. Um, as far as people looking up for this big ship to come, they've already been here and alongside us the entire time. And, um, you know, I re- what I've seen, like, you know, visions and stuff that I've had, I've definitely seen a big change. And I've seen, you know, even recently just this huge kind of destructive um, vision where it's, it's like an aftermath of something. And I, I haven't seen the actual cause of it. I've just seen the aftermath. So I'm not sure if it's, you know, something nuclear or, you know, exactly what has occurred. If it's a natural disaster, I just see the people and I can see them walking around in a daze and they just don't look well. Like looking at the color of the skin and stuff, it looks off. And um, unfortunately, a lot of it's been kind of, you know, really a, a negative vision because I've seen a lot of destruction and blood and death, unfortunately. But after that, I do see things getting better and I see things being, you know, 
not the same as they are now, but getting back to some form of normalcy. I just don't see everyone surviving it. So. Well, you know, I had, yeah, I had a great sense of calm the same day that you. Right, when I was telling Guy about what I had seen and everything, and, and I've seen things like this yeah. off and on. And um, I asked him if he had any kind of a sense of anything like that happening because I had several friends who were psychics and I'm like, are you feeling this? And I'm like, yes, and I'm seeing it too, and it's not good. It's, it's almost like the decision has been made, and there is a big change that's on its way, and we do need to get ready. Are, are you doing anything for preparations or anything yourself for some kind of an event, Paul? You know, I've, I've, um, I've thought about this, and mm-hmm. I don't fear death because I don't think death exists. Personally, I feel that, you know, it's just, uh, death is kind of like waking up from a dream. If you, I, I'm sure you guys had a word, you know, a dream where you, like, you fell and when you hit the ground you wake up. Or you've had a little scary dream where you, you're just like, oh, my God, there's no way out of this. Oh, my God, you get a little scared. And you think, I'm like, oh, my God, thank God I'm here. So that's just the same thing as death. So I'm not afraid. Yeah, no, I can't hear you. You're, you're coming here now. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. The, kind of like the reason uh, I have such a, a strong sense of calm is that, uh, you know, uh, I try to walk through life having no fear. So if I sense, uh, you know, things uh, are amiss, I just, uh, I'm immediately calm. Like when Wendy had her vision the other day, I was standing outside the street looking at these clouds above this mountain. And they were, you know, I looked up and they immediately grabbed me. And over the years, I've yeah. learned to pay attention to those spidey senses, whatever I call them. And uh, it was spidey a real, senses. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was a real nasty thunderstorm coming in. And I looked at mm-hmm. it, and I just felt this wave of uh, calm come over me, like uh, it's almost euphoric for a minute. And uh, so, you know, I, I don't know really. I, I don't know if that's a feeling just for me, or the area, right. or whatever. You know, I'm in the middle of Utah, in the middle of a desert right now. You know, uh, like how is Utah, by the way, compared to Philly? You, you said you just moved to Utah. Just to yeah. throw that in, I'm. I'm yeah, it's I have a habit dude. sometimes. A couple it's, people. It's, it's uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful, man. Right. I mean, it's very serene. And, uh, you know, I lived in Philly the last uh, 13 years. And I'd lived there uh, wow. in the late 80s for like five years. You know, playing in bands and stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, uh, I just had to get out of there, dude. It just uh, was a really bad I feel a sense of urgency to get out of here. If there's something in, in the inner me that's saying, dude, leave the city and leave the city fast because the city's going to be swallowed, not swallowed, but it's going to be, there's no, once the shit hits the fan, so to say, there's going to be no internet out of the city, and it's going to be panic and craziness, so, not, 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 I mean, this, I just have to get out of the city, is the feeling that I'm getting? I have that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, too, Paul, I've had the same feeling. Like, I need to get away from the city. The city has been the biggest thing that I've been sensing lately. You know, somewhere out in the middle of nowhere is where I need to go soon is what I've been feeling. <laughs> it's, uh, but you know what? I, I, I mean, um, I'm, as far as preparation is concerned, that Wendy asked me, I, I, I don't feel full. I don't feel the need to. I'm already prepared. You know, I'm, I'm conscious, consciously prepared. I'm spiritually when I say spiritually, I don't mean religiously. I'm spiritually prepared um, for this change. Um, I stand by humanity, and um, if humanity goes down, I want to go down with them. Um, you know, if, 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 I, if, if what I think is going to happen with humanity being knocked off and hybrids taken over, and, and that's the message that really hit me, is that these hybrids, these, these miscarriages, are for a reason. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, the, the grades tell me, you know, a lot of bad things are going to happen on the planet, and, but don't worry, I'm going to be saved. And, you know, after all these bad things happen, that all these good things are going to happen. But these good things do not involve me. They don't involve you. They don't involve guy. They involve the hybrids, not us. And, 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 and I get angry at this because I feel like, you know, because our government sold us out and, you know, basically said, you know, you can take as many people as you want. And 
you know, now the government's lost control because, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about reptilians and you're talking about greys. And, you know, they're, they're nowhere near the technology. I mean, yeah, they have a lot of, probably a lot of technology and they can time travel and that shit, but they have, my books have to drive. And, and, and I kind of feel like if, when, when this so-called shift happens of consciousness, I hope it's a positive one. But if everyone's destined to be recycled, because I've heard in the past that humanity has been recycled, I'm going down with the people, you know. Yeah, dude, I'm going to get a... My passion is for people, dude. I'm going to get a yeah. lawn chair. Go ahead, guys. I'm going to get a lawn chair, a couple 40s. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to sit right. in my yeah. front yard okay. with my dogs. Uh, yeah. Probably get a big fat one. I haven't smoked pot in 20 years, and just uh, yeah, watch it all watch cool. it all go down, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I just I, mean, drink, I just drink beer. I don't know about the pot, but I'm Josh have a whole beers with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I haven't I haven't smoked that. And you know what? The last time I smoked weed was 9/11. Was it? Yeah, it wow. took, took me uh, uh, like five hours to get out of the city, and I had to take a finally take a cab mm-hmm. ride, and uh, a bunch of kids, well, the guy was Hindu, and uh, the guy mm-hmm. took me to Bristol, and people were throwing shit at his cab. Mm-hmm. Uh, but oh, kids, man, I had to be rough. Look, look, there's one of them. I mean, that's what they say. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, right there. And that's the show. If, if aliens came down, what would we do to them? That right there is, <laughs> is the reason. Dude, they started... It's the reason. I was at Independence oh, Hall. I was at Independence Hall, uh, right across <laughs> the street, uh... At the Prudential Building, uh, working for a publisher, yeah. and uh, the uh, you know how they had the lunch trucks all over the little carts. Well, they had a mm-hmm. guy. Uh, he was Muslim, and people started right. rocking his cart with him in it. Oh my Police god! Police had to come because ATF showed up, dude. They were worried about you know blowing up the. We we're all sitting there, you know. And I'll say, we hear, ah, the guys are banging on it, and they're moving it back and forth. You son of a bitch. Oh, I'm just unbelievable. And I'm just like, my God, man. <laughs> I mean. And you see the real ignorance. And, God, you see the real ignorance in, in people because, obviously, a man is Hindu. He's not a Muslim. But because they see the turban and, the, you know, we got the beard, it's like, oh, he's a Muslim. And I'm like, really? Like, this Sometimes I look at people and how people act, guy, uh, and... No, go ahead. I don't want to catch up. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, uh, you're, you're, you're talking about extremism with Muslims. I mean, regular Muslims, yeah. they're just like regular Christians and regular Catholics. They're, they don't, you know, they don't really, they don't hate, they're, they're peaceful people. And it's only when you get people that it, uh, exploit different passages for their own... Uh, use and start extremism that you have these people flying stuff into plane, uh, planes into buildings and you have fundamentalist yeah. Christians doing all this crazy crap and you know fundamentalist Hindus mm-hmm. killing Muslims that's that's where all that comes from and people don't understand that you know uh, so since, so since we're on the whole UFO subject do you think humans were ever eaten by uh, by uh, reptilians in the in the past? They were eaten. You know the hieroglyphic points to that. Yeah, they sacrificed. Eat. Oh, um, are you talking about like Sumerian and Canaanite and stuff like that? Right. Because, well, they're showed. Uh, I don't know if eaten, but I know they've they're shown nursing babies, nursing human babies. Oh yeah, you've seen that one too. Yeah, mm-hmm. and there's. Uh, um, I don't. I, I don't go to that. I. I really. When it comes to that, I don't. Uh, uh, I haven't really seen a lot of data on that at all. Um, it's been mm-hmm. mainly just uh, recycled stuff that somebody wrote on a bulletin board in the '80s and is still being recycled as something new. You mm-hmm. know. Um, so I, I've never. I haven't seen us being in any uh, capacity being used as food. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I believe I believe you when you uh, say that we've been manipulated. I mean, we sure as hell didn't evolve right. this way. I mean, we actually devolved, you know. 
we lost all our hair and our ability to smell and sight and hearing and all that stuff that kept us alive over millions and millions of years, you know, and now we got to manufacture stuff to keep us warm, keep us cool, you know, help us hear better, glasses so we can see. You know what I mean? I mean, we lost all of that stuff for oh, a reason. Exactly. So whether it was... Exactly. You know what I mean? Whether it was for... Uh, uh, <clears throat> we were manipulated, or we're just... I think so. Yeah, I think we were manipulated. I mean, I mean, uh, I, I, I really do. I think there was a point back in the day, because uh, it doesn't make sense that uh, everybody lost their hair. If you if you look at evolution, isn't that weird? Yeah, they say they say things like, "Oh, we migrated out of, out of Africa, and you know we didn't need it. We didn't need it. Our throat's too high." And, yeah, but I'm know. like, look, man, there's people that have lived societies that have lived in the cold mountains for millennia. You know, they lost all their hair. They're walking around wearing coats and you know and all that stuff. <laughs> Uh, that's the type of stuff that uh, that I think about. That, not that it doesn't it doesn't like reinforce my belief in or uh, my opinions about UFOs and aliens and stuff. Is like you know, look at it. Why would that happen? Why would that happen worldwide to everybody? Every every you know every line of humans because there's many you know Asians, Irish, you know. The gingers <laughs> with no souls. <laughs> you know, you have all these, uh, you have the Persians and Greeks and all those Mediterranean and, you know, and all the uh, ethnicities that, that, that died out, you know. And uh, so I truly believe that there was some sort of uh, shenanigans going on with our DNA. <laughs> And pilots are always out and about in the middle of the action, you know, attending, you know, protests, stakeouts, and conventions and everything like that. What kind of things have you done personally to kind of investigate, you know, the hybrids and the grays and stuff? Can you share a little about that? Or That's a really good question, and I, I would love to. Um, you know, I've sent stuff out on Craigslist, uh, you know, um, have you ever been a doctor? by um, aliens, UFOs, that have missed some time. And, and I've actually tried my own, you know, how I say how, like, um, the whole hipster movement in Philly with the coffee shops and the bars and yeah. the fact that there's... <laughs> the fact, now, hear, hear me out for a second, because this makes a lot of sense. There's, there's no jobs and there's no economy, right? The economy's shitty. Now, you have, I think, 13 factories that have been redone in the city. 13 that have at least 30 people, okay? If me or you would have rented it, it would cost us at least 1200 for a one-bedroom apartment. Where's all this money coming from? There's no jobs, okay? So you're talking about 13 times 30, all right? And then you're looking at all the coffee shops that are being opened, all the new bars, the new clubs. They don't socialize with people. They keep to themselves. And like I said, it's not like a piece, you know, let's clean up the earth type of thing. It's like what I did answer Winnie's question and it is basically I just went to one of the bars and the feeling I got was half positive and half negative because you know I, I, I'm a positive person and I try to pump out as much love energy as I can with people and if I walk down you know down the street people say oh, I don't even know shake my hand shit and so I did that I said well let me let me see if I'm home see if I'm right um, and I went to the bar and I made eye contact and and, 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 and I'm telling you I'm telling you, we are, you're going to think this is crazy, crazy, but hybrids are among us. I did my own research, and I went into these bars, and, and some of them are nice, and I would say about 80% of them are nice. But I've, 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 I've went to, um, I've checked things out, and it just doesn't make sense to me. Why is there, you know, 13 factories in the city of Philadelphia? Where's all this money coming from? It's, in my opinion, it's government-funded. The government's basically saying, okay, you guys, are, when the shit hits the fan, you guys are going to be here to calm down the masses. That could make sense. I mean, it could be that. It could be when the shit hits the fan that, you know, they're going to take over. And 
it's, it's something's going to happen. But I know that they're not 100% human. So what do you do I, when you're there? Do you, do you just, like, do you ask specific questions or you just observe? What, what are you doing? I do ask questions because, you know mm-hmm. what, you guys, you, you see me and I'm, I'm wild and, you know, I have um, a wild spirit. So it's not, you know, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it the way French Troop Chaser would do it. Right, <laughs> of course. But, so I did, yeah. I, I, I mean, I would observe things and, and I asked this guy and I said, oh, so what are you talking about, buddy? He said, oh, it's complicated. I said, it's complicated. Well, I said, look, man, I'm sitting here drinking a beer. I've got all night, <laughs> you know. And and, and um, he, he basically, we were talking, and he, he would say, you know, you know, you're not from here, and where do you work? It's, I never get a straight answer. And if I do get an answer, it's kind of like a, yeah, you know, I work in a hippie shop or I work in, I work at, you know, this bar, that bar. It's, it's, or or um, I think the one guy told me he was a computer tech specialist or something like that. So it's, you know, I mingle, I, I would mingle and treat them exactly how I would treat someone who wasn't a hybrid because I don't, I'm not going to go in there and, 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 and discriminate because you got, you're talking about someone who's half human and half, you know, reptilian or half um, gray and, and they have telepathy powers way beyond us probably. So, you know, if I go in there with judgmental energy, they're going to feel it. And right from, that's what I'm going to get back. You know, what I give is what I'm going to get back. So I, I, I would go in there with love and light, and, and I just, you know, poke around. Poke around, answer a couple of things. I mean, see, you don't really have to physically come out and say it because they feel you. Exactly, and because they are so okay. telepathic, do you ever receive any messages right. telepathic yourself while you're in their presence? I do. I, all, all the time. Right. All the time. That's okay. All the time. It's, 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 um... It's, it's, it's basically as far as talking, like I'll, I'll make small talk, but right off the bat, they, right out of, off the bat, they just know that it's small talk. It's like, yeah, you know, don't bother me with your small talk. <laughs> but I, I mean, you can, you can, you can talk to them and, and have a, a conversation about music or anything while the whole time you're talking telepathically, you're, you're getting stuff sent to you. Um, it's been mostly positive with me because I think, like, again, I, they're, they're so, you know, you got to realize that these people that are hybrid stick together because humanity don't know how to handle this. Um, and especially if they're here to replace us, humanity, again, doesn't fit in with them. So by me going and say, if you're a hybrid, what do you let's just say I go in your bar, right? You're sitting there and, you know, you're, you're going to be like, wow, this guy sees me, he feels me, he knows what I'm about. And, and he, more than anything, that he accepts it. And I think that's why I've got a lot of positive feedback, and I know what I know. Because when I search for answers from the universe or, or from, you know, um, um, anything, when you, when, you, when, you, when you search through love, you're going to get back love. When you search through hate, you're going to get back hate. And um, I guess 80% of them are, are positive. There's a few that aren't, and it's kind of like a get the hell away from me type of thing. It's kind of like... Um, and then people that are listening are like, yeah, because he's crazy. He's going into a bar and he thinks they're full of hybrids. But, <laughs> but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of one of those deals where it's, it's, the answers I would get back would be telepathically. And it's, they're here, they're, they seem like they're here, like they don't have hate in them. 80% that, that I've talked to, that I've felt, they don't seem like, like, they're all about the mission, if that makes sense. Exactly. It's all about they the greater good. Right. They don't care about petty shit. They don't care about the petty bullshit. They're, 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 you know, because I'm, I'm sitting right now and I'm really thinking on this, and I'm kind of taking myself back to where I was when I, you know, would, would hang out in the bars and all. They're just, they're just all about, they're all about themselves. They're all about sticking together. They're not worried about, you know, the, they call us the locals. They're not worried about us. They're just worried about planting their garden, sticking together, and it's like they're waiting for something. But as they're waiting for something, they just stick together. It's, it's uh, you know, I, like I said, um, and I told you this off, um, off the show, Wendy, I said, without us, there is no them. You realize that. Right, yes. Okay. Half, of us, half, of us is, half of us is them, you know? And I feel that, um, you know, they can't look down on us because if I, if I remember correctly from my studies and what I studied, the uh, Braves had a real difficult time with, with the emotional 
state of their offspring, their clones, their hybrids. So their emotions that they get, all that junk, love, and um, pain, and, and, and all that stuff comes from, from us. So if, if, if I was to feel the presence of a hybrid and, and, and they were to pump negative energy towards me, I, I think I would put them in their place real quick and be like, listen, you're, you're not shit without us. But, um, yeah. But does that answer your question? Or, or not? Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, really they sense that you're open-minded and you're more curious as opposed to a threat. And so they're normally courteous and kind to you. It seems to be that way. Because it's kind of like the first thing I do when I go there to certain bars where I know where they're at or if I – you, you got to understand, when you do telepathy, it's within seconds. It's not like yeah. you stand there for minutes. So you can walk by someone and they can te- telepathically hit you with like three days worth of knowledge. And so so what I've done was I would walk by and everything I know about you, you know, um, aliens, the greys, underground bases, different things about the trade codes, um, the um, Andromedans, the Pleiadians, um, the Lyrians. I would walk by them and if I sensed that they were, you know, different from us, I would hit them with that. All my thoughts, I would just like, you know, hit them with that. And as soon as I would do that, they would smile and then hit me with what they know. It's powerful. It's um it's uh, 80% of it's love. I've got negative feedback. If you want me to talk about that, it's up to you. <laughs> oh, you know, sure, absolutely. Anything that you want to share. And, I mean, and I want you to know, too, that, you know, sharing your experiences and stuff, you should never worry about what people are going to think. What matters is really what resonates true in your heart and with yourself. And anyone out there that wants to judge you, you know, they really need to look at themselves first. But... Definitely, I want to hear all about your experiences, and if, even if they're negative, go right ahead. Uh, well, the negative, the negative feedback I got from from kind of you know researching the whole hybrid thing was, if you know, it, it kind of it, 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 it's kind of like a like a like a you're below me type of feeling. Okay. And that's not like I'm. It's not like I'm saying that because it's like I'm insecure or that's how I've been brought up and raised. Like, I, I've always got along with people. I've always been in, within, you know, had no problems with people. What I mean by that is, is that what it's like they, the, the few that I've tried to, you know, connect with, it was like, I don't even want to be bothered with you. Like, you're scum. Like, you're just, you're human. Nothing to say to you. Right. And, 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 um, Maybe, you know, and, and you have to realize that emotion is emotion is a, is a powerful thing. And if you're a hybrid and you have, you know, the benefit of being ET and human emotions, sometimes it can be, um, you know, hard to control. And, you know, where there's, where there's love, there's not. Sometimes there's hate. And, you know, maybe they, they, they hate us because they're not 100% us. And they are the hybrid side. And, you know... That's where it comes back to love and light. You, know, mm-hmm. you, you, you give them that love and say, all right, well, it's no big deal. Well, hey. and, and, and that's where I get into to the girl that was telling me that she shifted. It was, you know, like, look, beauty is beauty. Like, you know, I, I, I told her, I was like, look, I, I hope I see you again. I mean, I, I want to look you in the eyes now and hold you. And knowing that you know that I know and, you know, <laughs> I know that you know I want to hold you and, and tell you that you're beautiful. And, 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 and that's what it's all about. Now that you know and the cat's out the box or the rat, whatever we call that. Cat's out of the bag. Right, out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 just, that's how I feel. And is there hope for humanity? In my eyes, yes, there's hope for humanity. Um, I don't care if the Zetas, the Greys are against us and the hybrids are going to take over. I don't care if we're being kill through water, air, and war, and famine, and I, 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 will, I, will, I will never lose hope because I do believe that through, you know, your thoughts, you can create your own reality, and if I wake up and you wake up and guy wakes up enough people to the shit that's going down, that maybe in other people's reality that are negative, they'll have that outcome. But in our reality, we'll have a different outcome. So there's, it's like type of, like, you understand? So there's two different re- outcomes. The positive people have a positive outcome. The negative people are going to have the World War III. Let them have their World War III and let the Zetas and all the negative beings eat off their negative energy. 
But in our reality, it's going to be different. And I think your viewers really need to understand this because it's real important because a lot of people think, like, well, I'm only one person. How can I change the world? And if I only wake up five people out of a thousand that I try to reach, how can we change the world? Because for the five people that you can reach, you can transform their reality, and they might not have, you know, the same outcome. One more thing I want to say is it's about the web that's been around the planet. And it's, it's called a veil, a, a veil, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, what a lot of, from, this is what I got from a hybrid that was actually, I was talking to when I was playing the garden. And he, in, in the uh, telepathic message was basically, he wasn't born, uh, he wasn't born on this planet. The Greys make sure, and the Dracos and, you know, the Reptilians make sure that their offspring are born off the planet. The reason for that is, is that when they die, you know, they're not trapped in the karma veil that we are as onworlders. And if there's a web that's around the planet, that's why people have deja vu, because what happens is when they die and they go to the astral world, they hit that web and they come right back down again. And they're recycled into, you know, the life force, life energy. But this is why a lot of people are saying, well, Planet X never was supposed to break the web and we're all going to ascend. But I do know that that these hybrids are off-world born. I mean, that's what Love and Light does. You know, they share this info with me. So I'll probably be with mother or have a stroke in the next year. So if you don't hear it from Country Street Chaser, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Guys, if you don't hear it from me, dude, the government got me, man. Because <laughs> uh, it's the stuff that I know. And not a lot of people know. But, you know, it's the... Uh, it is what it is, and I would rather die in service than um, in service of the people than, you know, die knowing what I know and, and not doing anything about it. Because, you know, I would love to play PS3. You know, John Madden 2013 is coming out. I love doing the tournament. Right. And I, 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 I'm, I'm a normal guy. I play video games, and, and, and I love, you know, my alcohol from time to time. You know, you go to the party, have a couple of drinks, and I love the company of a female. That's that's my that's my that's my thing. That's my release from this, you know, truth chasing and, and trying to wake up the world. You know, I, you know, I, I love to relax and, and, and have the company of a woman and, and, and live in, I live normal just like everyone else. UFOs so and hoes, man. Say, <laughs> UFOs and hoes, my bro. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what, guy? You know what, dude? I, I could say I could say I could. I could say screw it all, guy, and I could just, like, say, look, I'm going to settle down. I'm going to have the white picket fence with the pool and wife and kids. You know, just, just, but every time I look up in the sky, I'm going to see it. Every time I taste the nasty water, I'm going to see it. And, I, if, you know, once you're awake, you're awake. There is no going back. There is no, okay, I know all this information, so I'm just going to go back to sleep again. It, it, it doesn't work like that. You're here, you know, the button, button's already been pushed. You're here to do a job. Suck it up. You know, and just try to, you know, you know, no matter how many friends you lose, no matter how many family you lose, they call you a psychopath, you're crazy, and, you know, you, you have to suck it up and you have to do your job and it gets, it gets, um, you know, it gets frustrating at times when you try to wake people up. But, you know, just, um, we have to keep going and we have to somehow hold on to a normal life so we don't go in, insane waking people up. You know what I'm saying? And that's where the hoes and UFOs come in. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's well, good. you know what? I, I, uh, when I, well, I used to do a different radio show and, uh, uh, for a few years, and, uh, I would, uh, you know, I was pretty open about it at my job in Philly, and, uh, you know, I had, uh, people coming up to me and talking to me like me, mm-hmm. you know, Vice President of HR, you know. I talked to her for three hours one uh, Friday night. Uh, right. And she's just like, you know, I can't talk about this with anybody. You know, because people are afraid of, they're, they're afraid of being ridiculed and they're afraid of, right. you know, and so they don't, they just go back to sleep or whatever. But it's weird when someone like me or you or Wendy, uh, Get in a conversation with someone like this, uh, they they tend to open up. You know, I've had uh, bosses and uh, coworkers and 
you know, they'll be like, send me an email to a link that's like, oh, dude, did you hear about this? You know what I mean? They're just like, right. they, they kind of get excited about it. So I think it's just a matter of when you get uh, enough people together, uh, they'll start talking about it when they realize that it's okay to talk about things and not be ridiculed. I agree. I mean, I have a buddy of mine. He sends me all stuff on all coast to coast AM, and, but he's not going to publicly come out and you know hand out flyers like you know there's hybrids here or there's chemtrails there, or, you know the new world order and all that. But he, it, it's kind of like I'm his, his, you know his release. It's, right. It's, um, it's his, um, you know what I'm saying. Right. I'm his, I'm his person that he can go to and say, hey, look, I've seen this, or hey, I read about this, like you said. But, um, yeah, they can talk. You know, uh, th- their interest is, uh, mm-hmm. uh, is peaked, and they can have a conversation with somebody without being, you know what I mean? Ridicule. Like, uh, yeah, or that's, or just, not so much ridicule, but made, uh, you know, people can be condescending and stuff like that, and, you know, like, oh, that's not true. You know what I mean? They just right. you know, blow it off just immediately without even thinking about it. You know, mm-hmm. and that's where the fear comes in. When I, 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 I fear and fear is what they control us with. Um, and I'm telling you, when I first started, people said, well, when did you first wake up? And when did you first, you know, when did you first um, wake up? Were you awake? And I said, I've always, I always was. When I talked out of my mom, I was, you know, I was there. <laughs> I was always thinking outside of the box, and that, and that ever since a young age. I mean, I've had people say, "Oh, you're a diamond in a rough." But nobody even intended when I say this. But people were like, "Oh, you're different." You're this. And you know, I just never put too much thought into it. Like I never gotten, you know, really realized it. But you know, and, and, and people need to realize when when you first go against the um, the slave system that we're born in, when when they first decide to say, okay, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to make a change, whether it, it helps or not, and you're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be, you're going to go through that. And I, I'm, I'm just used to it now. I mean, I've been outside handing out flyers. I go door to door in the heat and do like, like 400 houses a week or two and flyers. And, and I've had shit, shit thrown at me. Like, hey, look, it's the true crazy. It's the, what do you call me, the shit, shit, shit chaser or something that threw a ball at me? I'm used to it. It's just to the point I just let it off. When it, when it first had happened to me, I was devastated. I was just like, you know, and then I went back to David Icke when he was um, man's ridiculed on, on TV. And um, I think it was the, um, which show was he on? I forget the exact show he was on, but he was ridiculed when he first started. And he, he made a comment. He said, well, I can do one or two things. I could sit in the corner and, and, and cry and go back to sleep and, and live a normal life, or I can shake it off, say, you know what, this is who I am, and, and I'm going to deal with it. And, you know, a lot of things I'm talking about on this show are going to turn a lot of heads, you know, one being a guy, because I'm giving you guys information that not a lot of people know, and hopefully the government doesn't get a hold of it. Because <laughs> I know a lot I know a lot of shit that people just don't know. And, and and it comes back to what Guy said, power is power. And, you know, the, um, I don't know if people in power would be too happy knowing that I'm out giving out 400 flyers every two weeks. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's exposing what they do. Am I afraid? Of course I'm not. Because, like I said, I'm in service to the people. And if they get me, they get me. You know, it just hopefully if, 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 if they do get me or whatever happens that when I, uh, when I pass, I... Like I told Wendy off the air before I said that, hopefully there's a way I can get out of this web, because like I said, there's a web around the planet. There's an energy field around the planet. And hopefully there's a portal or something where I can get to have off this planet and go back to Lyra. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Wendy? Exactly. And, you know, Paul, you're talking about, you know, some of the bad experiences going to door to door and stuff like that. You know, what kind of positive supportive experiences have you received? Has there been any support from your family or for what you're doing? You know what? They're, 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 they're really, really... They're, the support that I had got from my family was an unexpected support. And it was something I'll remember for the rest of my life. You know, my dad, um, you know, he wasn't the perfect father, but, you know, he, um, who is, right? Everyone makes mistakes. Uh, and what had happened was he had, he had had a stroke and, you know, 
you know, I was there for him, and my brother, you know, was now there for him, and they get along great and all. And well, at one time, you know, they, they really didn't, whatever. But that's family business. But the one thing that I would say are positive that had to happen when it went, and everyone was laughing at me and saying, "Oh, look at him, it's Prince crazy," and you know, all that stuff, and the people's Prince, he's a fake, he's a fraud, and. Now, my dad and me were at the bar, and he's like, you know they're all last night, son. And I said, you know what, Dad? I, I know they are. But I, I, I know what I'm going to be in the next year or two. I, I, you know, one foot after another, keep trying to wake up as many people as I can through love and light. And I know what I'm going to be because I believe I'm the best at what I do, and that's waking up people and bringing love. There's no one better in my mind. And and and, and, I, and I said, if you, if, you, if you would compare me as the number one draft pick in football, I'm the number one draft pick. And... And I'm just, I'm ready. I'm, I, I, my passion is there. Um, I'm hungry for what I do. And, and he took his beer and, you know, he took the beer to me. And my whole life, you know, I've always had to fight for acceptance from this man. Mm-hmm. When he did that, I just, I was just like, like, wow, you know, like, there was this man that was so tough before he had, you know, the stroke and was so hard. And, you know, now he's, he, that was, this is probably the greatest moment of my life. And that didn't, actually didn't happen that long ago, but it I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that. That's definitely incredible. You know, they say... But, uh, is there anything uh, else? Here? Yeah, they say when people's okay. had uh, something traumatic like that happen, like a stroke, a uh, heart attack, yeah. that they uh, uh, wake up, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. You know, to whether it's... Weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it happens to a lot of people, you know, and uh, that's cool that you and your dad could uh, uh, have that moment. Yeah. And Paul, I know that you have... I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I know that you have some exciting um, projects that you're going to have coming up. Do you want to share today, or...? I love how you keep things fresh. As soon as things start getting dull in the show, and he's just like, "Woo!" <laughs> okay, I'm mean, <laughs> you, you're, you're you're on cue. You're on cue. Um, yeah, I, I actually do have some projects. I'm actually going to be in um, well, I'm, I'm going to be in California. Hopefully, in another two weeks, I'm going to be doing um, I'm going to be in a chemtrail um conference with um Sophia Smallstorm and a couple other people, and um, that's going to be really cool. Um. Um, I have, um, I'm going to be doing, also I'm going to be doing interviews on, um, abductees. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be doing that. Okay. Kind of, Are you going to give a presentation or anything like that? Or a radio yeah, show maybe? Yeah, the conference. I will, well, at the conference, I'm, I'm basically, I'm probably going to do a little filming and hopefully my audio on my phone is going to be working good this time. Um. And the cool thing is, is I'm going to actually, I'm going to film and I'm going to do interviews. Like I'll actually you know, be allowed to interview Sophia and, and a couple other people. There's going to be a weatherman that's there that's coming forward, actually, about the control spraying. Kick ass. Um, so I'm going to interview him and, and ask him, you know, questions. So I got that. I'm going to do that. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be speaking. I'm going to try to speak. It would be great if I could speak. I'm going to, you know, you, you, know, you guys know me. I'm just going to, I'm going to be all over the place there anyway, so right. my energy is going to be everywhere. So I'm just going to be like, hey, you know, I want to talk and, if they have the time, you know, I hopefully they'll let me. But if not, you know, just um, you know, me going there and doing the interviews and and you know, especially with the weatherman, weatherman, um, is is what people need to see worldwide because, you know, I met this guy Reese um about a week or week and a half ago and he showed me a uh, chemtrail um, you know, he showed me a chemtrail video that that he had did and he's like, wow, I, I thought I was crazy. I thought I was the only one that seen this stuff. So it's, it's, it's all about with and, you know, letting other people see, hey, look, man, this is, this is what it's about. You know, um, this is what's, you know, there are people out here who are trying to stop this stuff and wake up the world. But I've got that I'm doing, and, you know, I'm going to be doing um, interviews with, uh, like, people that have been abducted, abducted, abducted and so, so that other people who have been abducted can see that and say, you know, I'm not the only one. I'm not crazy. I, I had missing time, and my fetus was taken away from me, which... Has happened to millions of people, and there's a lot of people that just feel they feel alone right now. And 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 you know, it's our job to say, "Hey, listen, I love you. You're not alone." And then, which brings everything. Everything we do comes back to love. 
I don't know how much money, I don't know, we make a name for ourselves. Everything comes back to love. And if it doesn't come back to love for you, if someone, you know, then, then, then they're going to be stuck. They're, they're going to be, um, what I call, um, negative energy eaters. <laughs> but, other than that, other than those two things, um, you know, I'll keep you guys posted as far as any other, you know, upcoming projects I have. It's, you know, Great. We're definitely looking forward to hearing what else you have. Um, can you tell everyone how they can watch your YouTube videos to get more information? Yeah, it's, um, you can go to, um, it's, uh, I think it's www, I'm sorry, it's http, http, French True Chaser dot Yola site dot com. That's my website. And you can just basically click on the YouTube. You would go to www dot YouTube you know, French True Chaser, hit the channel of truth, that's the channel of truth, all my videos are there, you know, it's for some people, for some people it's not, um, again, it's all about love and light, and, um, you know, so that's my YouTube. Later, would, at some point, would you um, message me your website address again? Because the one that you had sent to me, I didn't have it. It wasn't the exact right one. It didn't work. Because I'd like to post it on the okay. site. That way everyone can just go to lightwavesradio.com and they can get both those links. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's a free website, you know. But I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I do that. I'll okay. definitely. So what would you say is, like, your most important message, Paul, that you really want to get out there to all the listeners? Is it love and and what would that be my most important message is basically you know humanity in general right now is is um we're at we're at a we're at a, a stepping stone right now and and basically the stepping stone is it's either going to be love or it's going to be fear and are we being recycled it kind of seems that way i mean you know I can, the list goes on and on, but regardless of what happens between this show and the next years to come, the, the message is, is, is clear. It's, it's that, you know, look at your children. Um, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're happy. They don't know what's going on. Fight with them. Um, get up off your couch and try to make a difference because, you know, even if things look bad and, you know, we, we got to stay positive, we got to put love in our heart, and we got to try to make a difference for our kids because if there, if there is hope for a future, and which goes back to what I said, that, you know, if, if, if you create the reality of, of love and light, maybe that it's possible that that could be your, you know, your manifestation through thought and that could be your future. We got we to gotta make, we gotta make the effort. If we don't make the effort, then check me. So my message for humanity is hold each other, hug each other, love each other, and um, be the change you want to see in the world. And that's that. it. Or as Bill and Ted would say, just be excellent to each other. And <laughs> everything's cool, man. I mean, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Are we still, are we still on error? Absolutely. Did, were there any other things that you wanted to share before we do go ahead and close? Because I want to make sure we get everything out. I just want to say, you know, thanks guys for having me on. And, you know, um, well, hey, we're sorry about yesterday. You know, put me on your off show and Definitely. that's okay. And we're really happy that you came I'm back actually, and share. Yeah, I'm actually glad that, that things worked out the way I did yesterday because I really wasn't yeah, things probably wouldn't have turned out. I think this was pretty good today, so it probably would have been a little different yesterday. But, well, know, things do uh, happen for a reason. It was meant to be today. They do. They do. Um, but, uh, yeah, so um, I guess I'm, yes, I really don't have much else to say. <laughs> Okay. We're so, again, so happy that you came on and shared all of your information. Do keep us in t- um, up to date with what you're doing and um, let us know. And when we have more information, maybe we can talk with you again. Great. So you guys are both on my Facebook. Um, also, post anything on my wall that you want, um, any websites that you want me to put on my web wall or whatever, you know, let me know. Guy, anything you're working on, any projects you're working on, same thing, dude, let me know. All right. You got it. I appreciate it. All right, Paul. Seriously, look, we have to we have to do this together, guys. You know. We do. We all do need to work together as one. All right. 
Great. And thank you, everyone, for listening to Lightwaves Radio. Again, for more information on Paul Wesley, Prince Truth Chaser, go ahead and go to lightwavesradio.com, and we'll have those links for you. Have an amazing evening, everyone. Love the light, everybody.